before I um, quickly go over some of the other approaches we might use to treat OCD. Here's um, one of my favorite trichotillomania stories. Um, this was a gentleman who read an article we wrote on OCD and the gut and how we had a number of patients that had abnormal metabolites of clostridia in the gut that we could pick up on the organic acid and we could treat it. Um, so he read the article he wrote and he said, well, trichotillomania is similar. I have these compulsive behaviors. Um, he uh, went to his psychiatrist. Uh, he was uh, not in the Boston area and he was told there's nothing that he could do for this hair pulling. He was a 40-plus-year-old uh, male. And after reading the article that we wrote on probiotics, he just went to the health food store, not a fancy brand. Uh, he took Brand X. He didn't want to market any products. He just said he took 30 billion pro probiotics every day. And within a few months, not pulled even one hair since mid-January. Not only has he been symptom-free, never had to apply any willpower or focus on stopping the hair pulling, the urges did not need to be fought off. They simply dissipated by themselves. He, um, I don't know if he still has, but he had a web page to try to help other people. Again, Brandex, probiotic, daily, um, long history of trichotillomania. So we use, um, uh, we look at uh, the gut. We look at levels of this uh, clostridium metabolite called HPHPA which interferes with um, dopamine uh, conversion to norepinephrine. And we have seen OCD and trichotillomania associated with it. Not every patient with trichotillomania would benefit from probiotics. Many do. But our approach is always looking at the big picture. Some individuals might be taking probiotics and inositol and 5-HTP. Certainly. We talked earlier about 90%, 95% of all serotonin produced in the GI tract, um, half of all the dopamine. But if vitamin D is required for the synthesis of uh, cofactor for TPH1 to make serotonin in the brain and shut off serotonin production in the gut, you can see how important these battle of the brains is. Okay, another area we're not going to have time to go into detail, but it's something that we talk about in, in many of our courses, is a reaction, a poor breakdown of dairy and wheat causing uh, OCD-related behaviors. This is a patient we admitted to our uh, eating disorder partial program a number of years ago, and this is uh, from her history. Uh, the patient began eating flour when she was 16 years old. She recalls being depressed at the time, could not pinpoint the thoughts that led her to eat flour, except that she enjoyed the taste of it. The patient associates eating flour with feeling relaxed and soothed. She presented to us with severe OCD, trichotillomania, and eating disorder. And what she did is she put water in a bag of flour and she ate the paste. She goes up to four pounds a day when we admitted her to our day program, she was taking two pounds per day. And why? Well, what happens if you're missing or deficient in an enzyme called DPP4? You can't break down the protein gluten or the protein casing from dairy or wheat completely. So you get these peptides, they're called exorphins, and they look like morphine casomorphine and gliadorphin. And we were able to test her urine and we could pick up very high levels of this gliadorphin, which is a morphine-like analog. And I have seen this in many, many of our OCD children, young adults and adults. Abnormality in an enzyme that breaks down dairy and wheat completely. The treatment is providing the uh, missing enzyme. You can get a supplement. The treatment is, for at least a limited time, uh, eliminating dairy and gluten 
Um, so you don't get this reaction that uh, for this woman uh, contributed. Now, what was fascinating to me, we did the test, we found dramatically high levels of this gliadorphin uh, in her urine, but she had no interest in, in stopping uh, the flower. She really couldn't. Um, part of it is because um, as morphine, these are morphine analogs, is a very, very significant addictive quality. 